Thanks for joining us, Sean. Uh, really glad you agreed to do this. Um, we'll go straight in. Uh, I think recently you asked in the Chamber about progress made in terms of women's participation in politics and gender inequality since the representation of People's Act of 1918. Now you started in politics about 25 years ago, serving a community, county, in the cabinet with Gwyneth, uh, and now in the Assembly. So I'll ask you the same question, but in your time as a politician, you know, so in your experience. Um, the lack of representation uh, of women and other groups as well, and minority groups, um, is shocking um, by now. Um, as you say, yes, I've been around quite a long time, um, <laughs> and I remember being um, a, a university student representative at Aberystwyth and being the only woman on the university council. And that's going back to the um, mid 70s, and being um, I remember the, the Vice Chancellor addressing the meeting as uh, saying, um, gentlemen and Miss Gwenllian, you know, and that was a long time ago, but things haven't fundamentally shifted from there. There's been some progress, yes, uh, but I did find myself recently the only woman on the cabinet of Gwyneth Council as the deputy leader. Uh, so we were back really, you know, in those days. Um, and it does make a huge difference, doesn't it? You know, having, uh, first of all, it's only fair anyway that, uh, you know, half the population is represented oh, and we're underrepresented uh, fundamentally um, in a significant way at the moment, 28% of uh, women and councillors. It's slightly better here in the, in the Assembly because there have been mechanisms in place, uh, but things have fallen back a little bit. Um, so uh, it, it, there is there's need now to sort of speed up the change and that's why I am in favour of mechanisms designed specifically to bring in lots more women and lots more diversity into politics uh, here but, uh, but on local councils as well. All right, so I, I wanted to touch on, on local councils because you mentioned then you were the only uh, woman in the cabinet in Gwyneth but I ch think I checked recently and there's still only one there is. Um, yeah. But in some cabinets throughout Wales, I think there's two without any women whatsoever, which, yeah. which is which is, which is ridiculous. You know, the stats of female councillors, as you said, 20%, that's not very comfortable reading. Um, what are the barriers for women becoming, let's say, councillors? Well, there are cultural barriers and there are practical barriers. That's how I would, you know, differentiate. And I think we've talked about this for so long. I mean, we know what the cultural bar barriers are. We know they're stereotyping and we know that uh, that women do lack self-confidence uh, at times, uh, putting their, their, their names forward and dislike maybe the confrontation that comes with being a political figure. Um, but the, the practical barriers are around childcare, meetings being held at the wrong times, um, the lack of, of role models. So it's it, it all kind of, um, it's a perpetuating circle. Um, I think it's time for action now. I mean, I, I, please, can we not go over what the barriers are? I think we know what the barriers are. I think now we need to say, right, there are barriers, uh, there is a problem what do we uh, do about it and what we've done so far hasn't worked obviously because we you know elements of it have, has, have worked maybe but we haven't really fundamentally changed the, the 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 situation and we need now to focus on solutions and getting rid of the barriers um what are those solutions and not just i you know moving from council actually um because you're a champion for tackling inequality you know i've done my research so what steps needs to be taken then? You know, what needs to be done now? Well, from a government level, I think that uh, gender issues need to be addressed um, right at the top of government. I've been advocating having a, a minister for women so that you have one person with responsibility for the cross-cutting nature of all the policies that need um, to be implemented and uh, uh, moved forward. Um, an action plan uh, coming from that. There's no point having a minister unless that person has an action plan with specific targets and goals and, and measures within that to move the agenda forward. I think that having more women here in the assembly um, would help take that agenda forward because research shows that um, when you have women 
uh, in, in equal representative numbers. Um, issues around childcare, um, you know, issues around maternity leave, parental leave, those become talked about. Um, and I think um, that's why we need to put particular mechanisms in place, flexible working. We need to be looking at, um, you know, how we can use flexible working to make life easier for, for assembly members. Job sharing, I, I advocate that. Um, I think it could work quite well in the setting of being an assembly member where you spend sort of half your time here in Cardiff and half your time in the constituency. That could be... Um, you know, one person could do half a year in the constituency, half the time, the rest of the year down here. Um, and an older woman could perhaps uh, get a, a younger woman with caring responsibilities to do a job share so that you're sort of moving somebody in from an early uh, stage, which probably wouldn't be able to become an AM, especially for, from North Wales. Um, with caring responsibilities, but it doesn't have to be two women, it could be a man and a woman, whatever. Um, and we need to be looking at that, but we also need to look at specific mechanisms for quotas. And the expert panel um, that's been looking at how we could change how elections are run in Wales, and we have the power to do that now, um, the panel has been um, advocating uh, setting up quotas so that political parties through legislation have to have equal numbers of candidates going forward for um, uh, elections. Um, up to now, I mean it's up to the individual political parties whether or not they adopt those kind of mechanisms and it's worked to some extent to be fair um, uh, but I think it needs to happen through legislation um, and the precise mechanism, you know, that's to be discussed again, maybe, depending on what kind of system we have going forward. If we have STV, for example, the quota system would work well. Um, but if we if we don't get to that position, and I hope we do get to that, that position, um, that we do have STV. Um, but if we if we don't get to that position, we need a plan B. We need to think, you know, OK, how are we going to get uh, more equal representation? Um, and look at those specific areas around quotas and, and job sharing. Um, earlier on you mentioned, uh, especially in North Wales, yeah. and for people listening, not watching, you made a, a face, and I think that's something I'd really want to come back to. Um, I think we've spoken to quite a few politicians so far, and I think you're from... Uh, from the northwest, the furthest p p uh, point away. Not quite. Shane Apiorworth is from Anglesey. He's about half an hour further than I am. Absolutely. So, but from the people that we've spoken to, you are the furthest right. away. Yeah. And we were we, we've been talking about this in the office about how about how far how long the travel is, how far you must travel, and it comes down to then um, work life balance. You know, and you're yeah. spending longer away. Um, you know, what does that mean for uh, mums and dads, or husbands and wives and girlfriends and boyfriends? And 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 how would that would put people off in your local community for a, maybe a young person in a Velin Heli to come forward and and stand? Well, it is a big barrier, the geographical barrier, which isn't recognised. I don't think you know having having the assembly in Cardiff, in the capital city, that's fine. Um, but it's a shame the capital city wasn't sort of you know in mid in the middle of Wales. Um, but that, you know that we're not going to change that overnight. Um, <laughs> uh, um, so it has to be recognised, I think, that there is that particular barrier because yes, I mean it takes it would take me four hours in a car to come down to Cardiff, four hours back twice a week. Um, plus being away, it's just not just the travel. It's being away from your family, from your community for, you know, a chunk of, of the week. And it, for me, OK, you know, my children are now grown up and they're quite independent. Uh, I don't have caring responsibilities at the moment. Um, so um, I can come down here and I can just throw myself into, into work here and, you know, forget what's going on in my home, la home life. But if you're a younger person with children or, or, or with caring responsibilities of older parents, you know, and then that comes into it as well. It's not about children. It's it's uh, increasingly about caring for, for older um, parents. It's it's not so easy when you've got a. It's not easy for people who live near Cardiff. But then if you at least they can go home 
um, in the evenings and you know spend time with their families and have that kind of work life balance is much better but if your family's up in North Wales you can't go home um, <laughs> from from here for, to spend the nights with them and it, it, it can it can be a barrier and I think you know that that's why the job sharing for example well, could help out couldn't it you know because if there was if there was a period of time where uh, one am had to be spending a lot of time at home with caring responsibilities for example or because of illness in the family whatever um if you if you could if there was another person sharing that job with you it makes it easier and then the barrier that people come up with is gone doesn't it yeah. and so you can encourage more people to come in then and and be political representatives and we need those people you know because otherwise what we're having is this, this people of a similar age group maybe um uh with similar kind of um outlook on life maybe and we're not having that diversity of opinion that we need to be bringing forward in Wales. Our politicians are a 24 7 job aren't they people people don't realize it, mm. that it's not just um it's not just being in the chamber there's uh, constituency work there's emails and um so people don't understand, don't realize how much work goes in to being assembly member it's relentless <laughs> and and i found you know being a local councillor was similar as well because you know people do expect you to sort of be at the end of the phone or uh, these days on Facebook Messenger and whatever, and, and they they expect answers. Um, we're in that kind of world, don't we? Where it's sort yeah. of immediate, um, and uh, yes, and the, you know, being in the chamber here, that that's one aspect of it, and you have to do your your work for the, to prepare for that. There are committees. I mean, I sit on two committees, and the workload on those. If you if you want to do your job properly, you have to spend time researching. Um, and sometimes that's just not possible. And sometimes you have to accept, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this as thoroughly as I would like to. Um, and uh, I think, you know, that that deters the scrutiny then that, that's happening um, here. But then the constituency work again is, is, I mean, we have staff, obviously, I could not cope without a, a dedicated team of staff that I have. Um, and they um, help with the casework um, and you know they keep things ticking over and we have to be really organized so that we don't lose people through the net um, and uh, it can get uh, very very busy at, at times that are around the casework as well um, but of course that does help feed into your political life uh, here because what you feel and what you find out from the casework really does give you an insight into what, how people live and what changes we need to be doing um, it, it down in the assembly then, you know, um, in, in gov for, for pushing governments into making changes. Oh, that's great. Just last, last quick question, because you mentioned um, social media and people contacting. Um, a lot of people said that um, abuse can be quite off-putting and the level of debate, and especially on social media. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, you know, we're in a different world to, to what we were to even kind of five years ago. Um, and uh, the abuse that women in particular are, are having to face is, is just completely unacceptable. And I think that is a cultural change that, that needs to happen. Um, and it's, it's a bit of a... Um, uh, a sign maybe of how women are still viewed as people that can be demeaned and that can be you know, abused uh, when you see it on social media it sort of shows it quite starkly we as women have to stop putting up with it and I think the Me Too campaign that's been happening around sexual harassment it shows you know there's an appetite now amongst women to actually say we've had enough for this kind of behaviour um, and I think um, you know, it shouldn't be seen as a deterrent. I mean, when you're a bit older like I am, I mean, you you get to find ways of coping with it and it doesn't get you down. Um, you know, we ha you have to get a thick skin. Um, but there's onus on the people who are doing the abusing as well, obviously, to sort of realise what they're doing and, um, um, and you know, that, it, that it's... Uh, hugely personal some of the statements that have been made and um, uh, hugely detrimental to, to, to a person's mental health uh, at, at times 
Um, but it's that's a cultural thing as well. I, I and I think you know yes, politicians get it more than most groups, but uh, but it happens to lots of people, and the, that kind of polarization that's there. But we need to, as a society, be sorting that one out. That's lovely. Uh, shall we see Andy? Yeah, Chris. Up.